Yesterday, the Chiefs beat the 49ers at the Super Bowl. Now, for those of you not in the know, like myself, let me put it in terms that you can understand. Taylor Swift's boyfriend's team won, which is relevant specifically for purposes of today's video. Now, in the lead up to the Super Bowl, there were these unhinged right wing conspiracy theories about how Biden was somehow orchestrating this entire victory for the Chiefs in order to pave the way for Travis Kels and Taylor Swift to endorse him. It's an incredibly goofy story. I did an entire video about it if you want to check that out. But Biden's team jokingly leaned into this conspiracy theory in a couple of ways. First, he referenced it in a TikTok video that his team released yesterday. Jason Kelsey or Travis Kelsey? Mama Kelsey. I understand she makes great chocolate chip cookies. Deviously plotting to rig the season so the Chiefs would make the Super Bowl or the Chiefs just being a good football team? You get in trouble if I told you. So, I mean... That's fun, right? He's taking a page out of John Fetterman's book and embracing silly conspiracy theories about him. But after the game was over, his social media team tweeted this dark Brandon meme with the caption, just like we drew it up. Now, in a vacuum, there's nothing wrong with this tweet. But unfortunately for him, as the president of the United States, this came off as extremely tone deaf for the fact that Israel, the government that he's funding and supplying weapons to, committed a massacre as that tweet went out, as the Super Bowl was taking place. And people were quick to point this out. For example, Owen Jones tweeted, Palestinians were picking up the body parts of their loved ones slaughtered by U.S. supplied bombs when Biden's team posted this. Also, Jewish Voice for Peace tweeted, Tonight, the Israeli military carried out a devastating and deadly assault on Rafah, a safe zone where displaced Palestinians were sheltering. The attack was possible because Biden keeps sending weapons to a genocidal government. Meanwhile, he's doing this. z Squirrel writes, the genocidal Israeli regime that Genocide Joe is funding and arming is right now at this moment mass murdering, beheading, maiming Palestinian babies and children in Rafa. Body parts are strewn across streets and buildings, and this is what the White House decided to post. And there's more, but you get the point. Now he's clearly trying to appeal to young voters by being quirky, but I mean, the cutesy Mimi stuff just isn't going to land when you're funding and aiding a genocide. And even though it's obvious that he wasn't referencing Israel's massacre in Rafa with that tweet, his team should have read the room and just not released it, given the circumstances. Now, Biden has tried to placate people concerned by reportedly seething privately about Netanyahu. And from time to time, we'll get leaks such as the following. NBC News reports, Biden has said he is trying to get Israel to agree to a ceasefire, but Netanyahu is giving him hell and is impossible to deal with, said the people familiar with Biden's comments, who all asked not to be named. Quote, he just feels like this is enough, one of the people said of the views expressed by Biden. It has to stop. Biden has in recent weeks Week, spoken privately about Netanyahu, a leader he has known for decades, with a candor that has surprised some of those on the receiving end of his comments, people familiar with him said. His description of his dealings with Netanyahu are peppered with contemptuous references to Netanyahu as this guy, these people said. And in at least three recent instances, Biden has called Netanyahu an asshole, according to three of the people directly familiar with his comments. Now, in theory, that sounds good to somebody who hasn't been paying close attention to this. These leaks try to paint Biden as a concerned but powerless president doing everything that he can behind the scenes to reign in Netanyahu. But the problem, as the title points out, is his administration hasn't significantly changed U.S. policy towards Israel and Gaza. And therein lies the problem. He actually thinks people are stupid enough to think that he's powerless in this situation when he's not. He is still supplying weapons to Israel. He is still supporting them. He is still using the United States' veto power on the Security Council to shield them from any accountability whatsoever, including just mere condemnations. And as a result, all these leaks do is demonstrate how insincere he is in his concern for Palestinians. And as Truanon put it, the purpose of these frequent leaks about Biden's frustration with Netanyahu is to provide some sort of cover for the Biden administration's full support, but it just makes him look even weaker and more pathetic. And Adam Johnson adds, the White House continues to use court stenographer reporters to launder an image of Biden somehow opposing mass death in Gaza, when in fact nothing has materially changed. These articles have been written dozens of times and are all sourced to self-serving anonymous White House officials. In other words, nobody's buying it. I'm not buying it. It's obvious what's going on here. But these leaks serve as damage control because the administration knows how unpopular this stance is with the Democratic Party's base. But it's just not helping. And if anything, it's hurting him because the people who are following this close enough to care, 
they find these reports insulting and downright patronizing. Another example is his announcement that he'd be sanctioning just four Israeli settlers before heading to Michigan to meet with Arab Americans. It's charitable to even call that the bare minimum. It's just embarrassing. And his attempt to control the narrative here has been a complete failure. Because, you know, you can't propagandize and gaslight when we can see what's happening with our very eyes. He knows what needs to be done, and his decision to allow this to continue is a choice. Now, I've shared this article multiple times, but this paragraph is worth repeating again. As Shrita Parsi of The Nation reports, in 1982, President Ronald Reagan was disgusted by Israeli bombardment of Lebanon. He stopped the transfer of cluster munitions to Israel and told Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin in a phone call that this is a holocaust. Reagan demanded that Israel withdraw its troops from Lebanon. Begin caved. 20 minutes after their phone call, Begin ordered a halt on attacks. So what's Biden's excuse? The answer is he has none. We have a Democratic president that is now to the right of Ronald Reagan on Israel-Palestine. And I say this not just because of his policies now. I say this because at the time he criticized Reagan for doing the right thing. So this is why the timing of that tweet was so atrocious. Because as he's watching the Super Bowl comfortably and enjoying himself, Israel is making use of the weapons that he gave them at a time when Americans weren't paying attention. As this viral tweet put it, they bombed Rafa during the Super Bowl so no one would notice. This is a genocide. And this is a move that comes after Netanyahu promised safe passage to people there. Now you can see the desperation in this woman's face as she reacts to their bombing. And in Arabic, she's saying, why are they bombing us? They told us this was a safe zone. They told us to come here. So why are they bombing us? But Netanyahu predictably broke that promise. Now, there was an effort to rescue hostages, but it came at an extreme cost to innocent Palestinians. The Washington Post reports, the Israeli strikes that lit up the night in Gaza's southern city of Rafah on Monday sent pulses of fear through the 1.4 million Palestinians for whom that strip of land has become a shelter of last resort. Israel's army described the overnight attacks as cover for a special forces mission to rescue two elderly Israeli Argentine hostages. The operation succeeded, freeing Fernando Simon Marmon, 60, and Louise Har, 70. The human cost was massive. At least 67 people were killed throughout the city, the Gaza Health Ministry said. A video from a house in Rafa showed the body of a Palestinian girl, her legs shredded into ribbons of flesh. Other footage from the city showed a bleeding boy being carried away and four more children dead on hospital stretchers. 164 people have been killed and another 200 wounded across the Gaza Strip in the past 24 hours, according to the health ministry. The overnight operation in Rafah, a place that has largely been spared this widespread aerial attacks in other parts of the enclave, shocked a bone-tired population that has spent months on the move trying to outrun the bombs. Yeah. And I saw the image of the Palestinian girl that they referenced whose legs were shredded into flesh ribbons. And that's going to stay with me for a very long time. So many images have been burned into my mind and it's really hard to not think about. And for those not keeping count, 12,300 children have been murdered by Israeli forces, and children now make up 43% of the death toll, meaning that Israel has killed more children than Hamas militants. And yet, just a handful of American politicians have had the courage to call for a ceasefire. It is so difficult to not feel hopeless when you see so much apathy from politicians in the face of unfathomable pain and suffering. The fact that they don't care enough or don't have the courage enough to just say ceasefire is just, it's really blackpilling, for lack of a better word. Now, we often focus on the children who lost their lives, but the ones who survive, they're going to be permanently changed as well. And this was stressed by the chair of the UN Human Rights Committee, Anne Skelton. No child should grow up in fear, pain, and hunger. Yet today, no child in Gaza is free from fear, pain, and hunger. In fact, they'll be considered lucky if they can even survive this war and have the chance to grow up. All children living in the Gaza Strip have lost their childhood. They are traumatized, and will forever live with a permanent impact on their mental health. Yeah, and this is something that we often don't think about. You know, it's great that as many people as possible are able to survive, but the ones who do survive, 
they're never going to be the same. And this terrorism is being paid for by our tax dollars. So in conclusion, Biden's team needs to read the room and maybe avoid shitposting during a fucking genocide. He's not going to win over young voters by memeing his way back to the White House. People want the bloodshed to stop. And until it does, literally nothing else he does or says matters.